Hi, I'm Sophie Alcorn of Alcorn Immigration Law. I'm here because I wanted to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving and also give you some updates about some changes that we see coming with Trump and as they relate to immigration policy in the United States. So we'll touch on a lot of topics. I want to talk about the EB-5 program, the NSEERS program, H-1Bs, and Trump policy in general. Uh, the EB-5 program is still going through December 9th, and then we'll see what Congress does, whether the lame duck Congress is going to move forward on extending the EB-5 regional center program, or if they're going to push it off to the new administration, and then we would have probably a very different type of EB-5 reform package that would go through. So there's been some interesting updates related to the H-1Bs. So first of all, um, President-elect Trump released a video on Monday night in which he said that he would be, he and his administration would be investigating all abuses of visa programs that undercut the American worker. So I personally believe that the H-1B program is a, a wonderful thing for America and um, creates jobs and brings talent to the United States and is not detrimental to the American worker. But I can see where there is room for reform. Um, I think one example is that the government, um, the, the government re regulations regarding the prevailing wages might need to be re-examined to make sure that the wages that the government requires H-1B employers to pay the foreign workers are actually aligned with competitive salaries in each geographical area. That being said, um, President-elect Trump appears to be um, going to be putting Senator Sessions in the position of Attorney General and he will have wide latitude to affect immigration policy and enforcement from that position. And he has been very critical of the H-1B program in the past. And I've, I believe he has even alluded to canceling the program. So <clears throat> I'm hopeful that that won't happen. I think H-1B reform would be fine, but we actually need more H-1Bs, not less H-1Bs. Um, Additionally, Trump has chosen Governor Nikki Haley of South Carolina to be in the position of ambassador to the United Nations. And that's kind of an interesting twist because during the campaign, um, they both criticized each other because Governor Haley said that she would welcome immigrants who have gone through a legal process into coming into South Carolina. And at that time, um, Trump accused that of being a weak position. So that's interesting. And then additionally, we have Bannon and Kobach in the transition team advising Trump. And you know, there's this old video where Trump is saying, you know, isn't it good to have Ivy League educated immigrants in the country? And, and Bannon is saying, well, you know, we're to the right of you on that. So that's a little um, discouraging. And then also Chris Kobach, who is uh, really anti-immigrant, uh, brought his 365-day strategic plan for DHS policy to a meeting with Trump. And one of the things on there involves reinstigating the NSEERS database in which um, individuals from particular countries, including Iran and North Korea, would have to register. And that was a program that we had in effect until 2011 when President Obama decided to stop using it because it wasn't really effective. So, you know, we're still keeping an eye on all of these things. We had an interesting situation where um, a new client came in and this person works at a big tech company and is all lined up to have that tech company sponsor them for an H-1B visa and later for a green card. And this individual was so concerned about just the, the future of what will happen that um, they decided that they wanted to pursue a different immigration route 
through their spouse, you know, even though the tech company would have paid for all of this had, had this person gone through the employment route in the future. So it's, you know, uncertain times, but there's still a lot that we can do to help immigrants right now. And, um, you know, just in closing, before we uh, close our office for Thanksgiving tomorrow, I just wanted to reflect on all of the wonderful things that we do have to be grateful for. You know, I'm, um, in, in terms of the legal things, I'm grateful that we live in a society that has rule of law, that has an independent judiciary, and where we do have freedom of speech. That is a good society to live in, and we have that, and I'm grateful for that. Um, here, work-wise, um, we're all grateful for our clients, our mentors, our supporters, and I'm grateful for the team that we've been building here at Alcorn Immigration Law. I was thinking back, and um, last Thanksgiving, my practice was me with a laptop sitting in a co-working space in Mountain View. And in the last year, we've seen huge changes with renting this office, and, um, and now we have a team of 10. So I'm really proud of that, and I'm really grateful for all of the amazing people here at Alcorn Immigration Law who I get the pleasure of working with every day. And we are passionate about helping immigrants come here and make better lives for themselves and their families. And we're also grateful to all of the immigrants who have helped make America what it is. Thank you and happy Thanksgiving.